In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at the Ruckus WAN gateway installation on a bare metal device. We'll walk through obtaining the software, creating bootable media, and then we'll go through the initial installation and configuration. We'll also take a look at licensing, as well as creating the first administrator account that we use to manage the WAN gateway. The first thing that we need to do is obtain the software package that we're gonna to use to create our bootable media to do this bare metal installation. And so I've navigated out to support.ruckuswireless.com to go ahead and obtain that. I'm gonna scroll down to RWG here, select that. Then I'm gonna choose software downloads. You can see here that we've got three different options and two of them are the same release version 14 0.735. The file type that you download kind of depends on how you plan on doing your installation. If you were doing a virtual installation, you might download the IMG file, but you could also, you know, download that ISO and, and map that into the CD-ROM and kind of boot off of that from a virtual perspective. Uh, in my case, I'm actually going to download the ISO because I'm using a very specific tool to create bootable media. Once you've obtained the version that you need for your environment, uh, and again, you can refer to the release notes for any of those particular releases to see uh, from a software and features perspective what it kind of includes. But once you've obtained that, you're going to use a utility to create bootable media so that you can use that media to do an installation onto bare metal. Uh, in my case, I am using a utility called Rufus. And from this utility, what we're able to do is specify an ISO image and browse to it. And this is the one that we've downloaded. And right now I have chosen to create a bootable disk image to my USB 32 gig uh, flash drive using that image. So once I've got all of that ready to go, I can create start and it will go ahead and create the bootable USB drive. And you can see that once the image is finished creating, it will say ready and we can close the utility. We now have a USB drive that is able to be utilized to do that bare metal installation. I'm gonna go ahead and click close and we're gonna switch to a different camera and we're gonna actually walk through this installation. Okay, here we are with our bare metal installation. As we discussed in the previous video, we do have Dell recommended hardware platforms, but for today's demonstration, I will be utilizing a device that has multiple NICs. It is recommended that you have at least three interfaces available, depending on what you need for your WAN gateway. I will say that the configuration of these uh, interfaces is a little bit different. So depending on how many interfaces your actual hardware may have, uh, they could be labeled uh, differently. I will say, you know, we've got Ethernet interface one, two, three, and four. And the way that these map out is uh, in the software, the port one is going to be IGB zero, IGB one, IGB two, and IGB three. Zero, one, two, three. Um, IGB zero will be by default the WAN interface and IGB three will be the LAN or management interface. So knowing that we know which interface we can plug into or which interface we need to connect into our cable modem. So let's get started with the actual install. I'm gonna take my USB drive, install it into the back of my device and go ahead and power it up. All right, so I've entered the boot menu and I'm going to go ahead and choose to boot off of my USB drive.
All right, so now we're taken into the installation. And um, I will say that my installation is going to detect a previous install. So that is okay. This device did have uh, Ruckus WAN Gateway previously installed. Uh, so I am going to go ahead and just install and overwrite by choosing yes. I will also have to uh, reuse this Z root directory. So I'm going to go ahead and choose OK to reuse the same Z root name. On a brand new installation, you will not have to make either of those new selections, uh, but in this case, I am. With regard to the storage architecture, uh, the Ruckus WAN gateway is utilizing ZFS software RAID. So you want to make sure that if you have multiple physical disks in your device, that they are identical and you're not using them as a combined volume. So meaning uh, that you do not have them configured for a RAID. It is a best practice to disable the hardware RAID as uh, it could cause some poor performance on your device when they're using a combined volume. At this point, we'll go ahead and speed up time on the video and come back and check in with you on the next step. The installer will reboot and then bring you to the initializing please wait. Uh, once you get to this screen, you've got about 10 more minutes, so go ahead and uh, be patient. You'll be given a menu, and once that menu appears, we will go ahead and resume. At this point, we are in the configuration tool on the CLI, and we have a few options on this menu. We can configure the WAN interface, the LAN interface, we can get into shell, or we can reboot and shut down and, and things like that. Now you'll notice that our WAN interface, uh, which is I, IGB zero, um, is not getting DHCP. Obviously it's not plugged in, but our LAN interface, which again was that I, IGB three, uh, it is already configured with um, an IP address of 192.168.5.1, as well as uh, with a DHCP scope. Um, what I'm actually gonna do is I, I'm gonna reconfigure my LAN uh, for the network that I want to um, configure. So I've chose option two, and then uh, we're gonna say to choose um, the interface IGB3, which is what's currently uh, configured. So we're gonna go ahead and choose option one here. And we're going to enter in the mask that I want to use with the proper formatting. Hold on one second. One nine two one six eight one dot one slash twenty four, and I am actually going to set my uh, DHCP pool to one nine two one six eight one dot one hundred and one nine two dot one sixty eight dot one dot two five four. So that's the range that I want for this particular DHCP pool. And after choosing enter, you can see now the first LAN configuration uh, will re kind of configure itself and it's reloading this uh, setting into the environment and it will show us the new IGB3 config for that LAN. And there we go. You can see we have that configured for now 192.168.1.1 with a range starting at dot 100 ending in dot 254 for DHCP. Uh, at this point, we could configure some additional things. If we actually had a static IP address for my WAN, uh, we could go ahead and configure that before plugging it in and things like that. Um, I'm actually gonna be utilizing DHCP on that interface. So what I need to do now is actually just shut this down and then I need to move it over to uh, where it's going to live and we can go ahead and finish the configurations up from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose to do that. Thank you. Logged into the web GUI on the device, we can see the first thing is this barcode. Uh, it's the installation unique identifier. It's this number up here that we can choose copy on. This is basically the serial number that we need to provide uh, to get a license file generated for the device. We basically can't do anything on this device until it's been licensed 
uh, and we've created an administrative account. So you can actually see up here the uh, message, please create at least one administrator or restore a prior backup. So we can license this device, we can create that admin, or we can do a backup restoration. I'm gonna go ahead and start by creating an administrative account. So I'm specifying the login, the password. I'm gonna go ahead and choose an email. Uh, the role for this account is gonna be super user. There are some other options that we could choose, but I do want this to be my administrative account. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. And I'm setting my first name and last name. I don't believe all of these fields are required. Um, so I'm not gonna fill all of them out, but uh, I do have my name and email address in there. I also have the option for an SSH key pair I will say um, our documentation does go through configuring this. So um, if you are wanting to do SSH into this device as well as manage it through the web UI, you do have to do the SSH key pair. So follow the documentation for that. And also make sure that you check this box under the account that authorizes it for admin login. Otherwise you're gonna try to use the key pairs uh, to log in via SSH and it's just going to fail. But if you check this box, uh, after following all those steps, you'll get right in. So with everything configured, I'm going to go ahead and click create. And it's telling me my password is too weak. Oh boy, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and create a stronger one. Hopefully. And click create again. All right, so we've now got the um, administrative account created. The next thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and create that license key or edit and apply that license key. So again, you can copy this IUI. Uh, I will say that this IUI is tied directly to the hardware. This actually hashes off of the system configuration. So if after the installation, you go and change uh, the amount of storage available, the amount of memory available, it's going to invalidate this IUI. So you want to make sure that you have all the hardware configurations that you're going to have for this machine uh, applied before you get to the point where you're generating that license key. So uh, just to save you any trouble of having to reimage the device, go ahead, just make sure you know, what you've know you got your con hardware configuration set the way you want it. Uh, I'm going to come down under license keys and click edit. I need to switch to my other screen to grab my key and paste that in and choose update. And we can see that my license key is now applied. And with the key and the admin account applied, I'm going to go ahead and choose reboot on this machine to go ahead and restart it. And we'll come back and take a look. And we can see once it restarts, uh, we are brought to the Ruckus Wayne Gateway login. I'm gonna go ahead and authenticate with that admin account that I just created. And we are logged in successfully. At this point, we're able to go ahead and start to make some configurations, but that's gonna be another video in the series. So thank you for watching this one and please join us for the next one.